My work is all about the action of leadership, of questioning existing habits that are in some way hampering performance and learning, and focusing on a more effective way of interacting with the people around you. Action is physical, thinking isn't enough. We need to change what we do with our bodies if we're to make changes and progress as leaders. One of the things that I'm really passionate about that follows on from this is getting clients to think physically and use movement to aid their focus and decisiveness. I've heard that a lack of movement was also detrimental to our health. I started reading up on this and researching a bit because it's an area of interest and I was really shocked to learn just how bad it is for our health. So when I stumbled on an article in a newspaper by an osteopath about poor posture and the health effects of holding prolonged static positions, like when you're working sitting too much, I immediately thought this is someone I want to talk to. I've already got lots of questions in my head. I know what harm we're doing to our leadership capability, but what are we really doing with our bodies by sitting too much? I'm really keen to find out. I'm off to talk to an expert in this field. I'm meeting today with Andrew Lawson, who together with his wife run Vivian Street Osteopaths. The article they wrote was fascinating. I'm intrigued to learn more. This sounds terrible, but I'm not even really sure what an osteopath does exactly, and I'm looking forward to finding out. This should be really interesting. And so what got you into sort of um, being an osteopath? osteopath. What's, your, what's yeah. your sort of story there? Um, kind of what yeah, so I'm just... coming from a sports background and um, so having experiences with osteopaths and physios and um, dealing with injuries and but also just developing my own sort of philosophy around the body as well yeah. um, from from the movement characteristics and training and and, and I had a, I had an experience actually when I was about 17 I had mm. quite a major back injury and I was okay. really um, it was right at the beginning of a, of a competitive season we mm. had a really good season the season before so I was really really highly motivated yeah. and then just knocked out for early what stages was uh, that was in rowing and, okay. and so I thought that was going to be it mm. for the season mm. and um, had, had no idea what it was going to mean for it and I, I decided to go away from home go mm. stay with some family in the Bay of Plenty and while I was staying with them um, they said oh, I go see if I'll see you and 24 hours later, it was just a completely different story how well I could move. Wow. The yeah. injury wasn't you know, fixed, yeah. but I was yeah. out of pain, I was mobile, I was actually to start to engage in rehabilitating back into, into training. And um, so, yeah, it made a huge difference for me at that stage. Mm. And so, that's kind of like an inspiration. Can you, so, I mean, I'm, I, I, you know, to be honest, I don't really know a lot about um, what's involved. So maybe you could. As, an osteopath? Yeah, yeah, so maybe you could sort of talk a little bit about what you actually do and how is it sort of different from other sort of disciplines like physio, for Yeah, instance? it's probably the most common question yeah. and um, it's not always an easy one to answer because okay. there's, there's so many different facets you could yeah. go into. Um, I try to do the most politically correct okay. <laughs> you know, way about it. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so it is, um, as, well, Principally, we're primary care practitioners, so mm. it was in allied health, just like as would physiotherapy would be working with GPs and, and with specialists. So we, we have our referral system and yeah. um, we are mostly manual therapists, so we're very hands-on mm -hmm. as opposed to, I think, with physiotherapy who are hands-on mm. and exercise focused as well. Um, they tend to also use other sort of electronic devices as well okay. in the therapy. Yep. Whereas osteopathy is much more, we, we diagnose with assessing the, the patient's movement and mm -hmm. also kind of feeling the quality of movement within the joint. So that's probably what's most important about our mm -hmm. practice is actually being able to detect dysfunction in the body. We tend to, we treat all parts of the body and people tend to, f seem that, to focus that we're just on spinal aspects. Yes. But part of uh, osteopath's position is, is we're looking at how well the body moves as an as overall unit. Where we differ from uh, physiotherapy, we tend to, from working with, with physios, from my understanding, we tend to have a lot more knowledge around uh, the autonomic nervous system okay. and the role that it has to play in the uh, sort of immune response regulation of um, internal organ function and, mm. and other aspects. So. Uh, the organs have suspensory ligaments onto parts of the skeletal system and mm. so if there's a dysfunction internally it can actually start to manifest mechanically as well mm. through other joints and things. Mm. So, fascinating yeah. and it really sounds like it's a very broad discipline there's all sorts of... Yeah that's um, what makes it so fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah really well, interesting. So. so I'm a leadership 
coach mm. and leadership trainer. And I'm, um, I, I work very much, um, I, I talk to people about thinking physically rather than thinking you know, mentally yeah. um, and actually think about their bodies at work. Mm -hmm. And it has a tremendous, in leadership, it has a tremendous impact on somebody's influence and their, um, you know, how they relate to other people, but mm. also on their ability to think and to focus and mm. to be decisive. Mm. Um, and I, I guess an area of interest in mine, which just kind of naturally leads on from there, is, you know, the sort of the unhealthy practices we have at mm. work, actually mm. these sort of static mm. positions, you mm. know, working at the computer, and especially sitting mm. for sort of prolonged periods mm. of time. And I sort of did my own little bits of research about how that's detrimental mm. to us, but I thought it would be just really interesting to hear the, what's actually going on physically. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, well, physically, if we take the, the standard kind of, it, it varies with people posture mm. and bad posture varies mm. within people. But the, the common problem is that we, we're living in boxes. So mm. we're living in this semi-flex position. So people don't really know what that means, but if, yeah. you, if you think about, if you flexed every joint in your body, you'll mm. end up in the fetal position, basically. Mm. Yeah. So we're kind of halfway to fetal position throughout our working day and some people are sitting like that for eight hours plus mm. sometimes mm. and so that has certainly have an effect on how the body actually accommodates uh, itself when you turn upright if you if you expose yourself to that pressure mm. uh, throughout the day day in day out um, you become a product of your environment mm. and so what that means on a physiological level we've got something called ligamentous creep mm. so we have all the ligaments and the muscles that help to maintain the spinal neutral position in its well-balanced position. Mm. Um, if we sit in a position where we're creating a stretch, mm. um, those ligaments, and ligaments are very tough customers, mm. but if you apply pressure long enough, then they start to give. Mm. And so you get this lengthening, an inappropriate lengthening. And so you have ligaments on one side of your spine starting to, to shorten, so you tend to shorten through this yes. line and you shorten through across the shoulders. Uh, and so the ligaments down the back of the spine are lengthening. So you've got now mm. this imbalance of ligamentous tension of, uh, of the spine. Yeah. But in addition to that, you also have the muscles adjusting their length tension relationship mm. as well. So you have shortening and tightening of say the pectoral muscles mm. and the lengthening and the weakening of the muscles that help to stabilize the scapular bones at okay. the back as well. So what that means is that Sooner or later, that tension builds and it builds and it builds, and you get the muscles get that are tight get tighter, and the weak mm. muscles that are long and weak get weaker, and they start to start to get achy at some point. Mm. And often people don't realise why is this happening to me, and it's a lot of it's down to your pain threshold level. We've got this pain threshold, which is your brain's ability to cancel out all the noise in your body so that you can function. If you're aware of it, it'll, all, everything that's happening one time, you'll be overloaded. Yes. And as we know, pain thresholds can go mm. up, up and down depending on your state with yeah. illness or emotion. Yeah. Um, but that tension is just slowly cooking. Mm. It's building up, building up, and it, then it just starts to cross that pain mm. threshold. And then it's your body's way of telling you, I think something's wrong here, I need to do something yeah. about it. Mm. And you talked, um, the article I was reading, you talked about muscles working in pairs. Is mm -hmm. that sort of what you mean, where you sort of have yeah, contraction? It's, and it's, a, it's quite a, probably a very simplistic mm. view on it, because that's evolved quite a bit lately. Yes. But in a very basic term, um, the stability and strength of a joint is reliant on, on, and on muscles being able to work uh, well together in a balanced mm. way. Mm. And so, um, so if you have, for example, shortening and tightening of mm. pe pectoral ma uh, minor muscle, that tends to draw the shoulder up and forward. Mm. And so if you're sitting in this position, that's why it gets short and tight over time. Mm. And then the muscles in the back are long and weak. And so now you have the muscles that are helping stabilize the joint in a new sort of default setting, which is a kind of faulty setting, if you like. Yeah. And so the difference if you're working, if, even if you're a builder working out in this position, which would be sort of an unstable position as opposed to having the shoulder in that position, mm. where the muscles are in more balance, then you're less likely to get a shoulder injury. So in a good balanced position, mm. less likely to have an impingement issue. Mm. So. so let's talk a little bit, so you know, from you know, carrying on from there about mm. good posture and bad posture. So what would be, so if we talk about what would be sort of bad posture, or is bad yeah. posture just being in a static position? Yeah, um, well, I suppose 
basically what we're just saying, then, mm. then bad posture is this imbalance in the body. And yeah. the, the, this, this slowed erosion, if you like. And it's of, like a prolonged period of yeah, a certain that, tension. And so the problems, when people come in with these problems that manifest, they've probably been coming on for a long time mm, as yeah. well. Poor posture, it can be different. You have sway back postures and type of kind of pigeon type postures where yeah. you're sticking the, the pelvis yeah. out a little bit more. So those, yeah, they can vary between people. So primarily we're looking at the curve from front to back in the body. Okay. Um, but there are variations from side to side. So when you're talking about good posture, you're sort of talking about the curve of the spine. Is that what you're... Essentially, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, good, yeah, so good posture is about maintaining good spinal neutral. And so if you look at the spine as a whole, it's like a big spring. And so what happens is as we uh, lose our good posture, mm. we allow areas of that spring to tighten up. And if they tighten up, then they lose the ability to absorb shock okay. as well. So there's yeah. less tolerance in the system. Mm. So if you say you're an office worker and you're, you know, your job is to sit behind a computer, mm. um, you know, is the answer to stand more because you know, the, the standing desk is all the rage? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or what, what's the sort of solution for, you know, what's the advice for Yeah, well, someone? yeah, yep. standing is an option, but of course if you stand all day, you're going to succumb to gravity just as much as when you're sitting down. You're going to have problems come up. There might be different problems to when you're sitting, but standing all day is not necessarily the answer either. Is that because it, in a similar way it's a static yeah. position? And, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, your nervous system is constantly trying to keep the muscles working to hold you upright against gravity. Okay, That's yeah. kind of what we're talking about. Yeah. So if you stand all day, you're going to find yourself getting like sore ankles and feet, pressure sores around, around the feet as well. The, uh, the deformation of the spine is going to happen, you will succumb to gravity because it's a fatiguing process mm. essentially as well because okay. we get tired. Yeah. And so what we need to do is to mix things up. Yep. So if you're in a sitting posture, if you've got a sit stand there, so you can go to a standing posture and mm. have a new position. If you've got a different type of seat that you sit on, some people like exercise balls. And exercise balls are kind of good for kind of conditioning your core to sit on. But yeah. the other reason why they're good is because you can fidget, you can move around. Okay. And fidgeting is really important because because uh, of circulation. So if you're okay. just sitting on a flat surface all the time, just your body weight compressing on, say, the gluteal muscles, uh, restricting blood flow. And that's, that's often when, when muscles start to become uh, inhibited because they're not receiving uh, the nutrients and oxygen that are needed to, to, for good cellular respiration. Um, so stability, uh, the stability system starts to alter when, when some muscles start to uh, switch off, others start to switch on more, so you get mm. often your lateral stabilizers are very tight in people. So you can start to sh the shift of balance of work of the gluteal muscles start okay. to change with that. I did read in your article something about the gluteal muscles, and I don't even know what they are. I was yeah, I actually yeah. had to look up to see what they were. Yeah. Um, but you know, you do say in there, you know, that they might stop working completely altogether, mm. and I was like, mm. oh gosh, don't want that to happen. But yeah, what yeah. So can talk through sort of what, yeah, sure, sure. Why so, would that happen? What would be the yeah, conditions for um, that happening? Well, just simply, uh, I, I suppose the best way to think about it is that our bodies are kind of inherently lazy. Yeah, in a, in a sense that it's an interesting yeah. Yeah, perspective. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it's because like if we if we just fulfil a certain task every day, um, I suppose lazy is not being fair because it's incredibly efficient. Yeah, if we just sit in all day, then we only perform that task. Mm. Our nervous system's thinking, well, I only need these muscles. So the motor pathway from your, your motor cortex that helps to coordinate the muscles and movements mm. starts to kind of dial down on the areas that you don't tend to use so much. Mm. And so it's really then, interesting. And, yeah. and so you, you, you get this, yeah, you get this, this, this uh, your, all of a sudden your default, talk about default settings starts mm. to change. So it's like a, like a computer code, if you like, for how we're gonna carry out our operation throughout the day. Yeah. And so what we want to do is um, uh, make sure that we are exercising into the into and trying to keep that that motor pathway to those areas of the body open by exercise movement yeah. um, but not just any movement good movement too so good movement with good posture and because good yeah. posture again if you if you just stand up and move around with your poor posture you're probably still not you're probably going on your default setting. you're not letting go of your tension because exactly. you kind of walk around yeah, in the yeah. same position yeah yeah, yeah. yeah exactly so um, so, so it's, yeah, good movement is key really to try and dial back 
the influence yep. is uh, it, it, it's sitting at the desk. So at an extreme, what you're saying is that some muscles can stop working altogether, yeah. kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what, the so gluteus, so that's your, your bottom, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. What so would that be? What, what, would, what problems would that cause if you're... And oh, is that from sitting yeah, too long? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, um, so, well, if we just talk about glute max, yeah. okay? Uh, uh, so it's the biggest muscle in your body. Okay. Everyone tends to recognize it at the Olympics. It's the biggest muscle on the sprinters. Okay. Right? So it really pushes you forward quite well. Yeah. Um, Never so, thought about it myself. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but so, so um, but it also has a, a, a like, it's kind of like the foundation, if you like, to your spine. It's kind of like the basis of which your spine is uh, part of the, so you've got the pelvis. Yeah. that the glutes attach on to yeah. which is the skeletal base but yeah. but the glutes offer a lot of support to the lower back and so if you don't have active glute max and you're very dependent all of yeah. a sudden on these very small erector spinae muscles that mm. run up your lumbar spine okay so um when it comes to bending forward and picking something up for mm. example your glute max even though when you're walking pushes you forward it helps swing your hip back mm. when your feet are planted it's actually helping you straighten up from a, mm. from a bent position. Okay. So if they're not switched on, all the weight is now higher up. So we've got quite a big muscle all mm. of a sudden absent in that functional line yeah. of, of tension through the body. So, so if, we can, if we can make sure that we're actually moving and, and activating that, then it just takes the work rate away from the erector spinae. Mm. And often people come in lower back issues, they're very tight and they rip the spine yeah. in, in, to the point where the fascia is tied up so much, it's, sometimes it's hard to actually lift the skin away from the tissue because it's just built up so much. Yeah. So there are tests that we do in clinic to sort of, we can show the patient yeah. like, to actually, if, if they lift their, lying on their front, lifting their leg up, they can feel when their hamstrings activate and if their glutes activate. And it's like, you, when they do that movement, they should feel both, but often they people don't. are just feeling their hamstrings kick in. The hamstrings biting in. Where yeah. Where the glutes need to be mm. active as well. It's, it's really interesting because in my work I talk a lot about habits. Mm. You know, and people say this is just me, and this is just who I am, and I say no, actually, it's just it's just a it's, habit. It's, it feels here normal. You are now, yeah, it's, exactly. It feels normal, yeah, but yeah. you know, and, and a new habit feels yeah, yeah. uncomfortable because it, you know, you just yeah, have exactly. to get used to it. And it sounds very much like on a, um, you know, on, on the, this level with your muscles working, it's all just about habit as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and probably like same sort of thing that I hear, but in a different way. As people say, oh, I'm just getting old. You know, with these aches yeah. and pains it's like well yeah you are older now than maybe when you didn't have pains but probably a lot of that process has been just bad habit formation yes. and not actually moving into it and so people sit all day at the desk and and for you know eight hours and they say but i'm getting my exercise for I, because i go walking every day yes. and i go for 20 i was gonna, 30, I was gonna minutes, ask you about this actually you yeah. know and and um and, and i was like well that that's good because mm. you're getting circulation up through the lower limbs and everything but have a look at maybe you think about your upper back Yep. Why are you getting all these headaches? Because there's this tension mm. there. And if you think how much movement your upper back's getting mm. compared to when you're sitting, there's really not that much more. Yeah. And so if we take the whole sphere of movement that your body is able to do, and if you're kind of only in this sphere when you're sitting at the desk, when you're walking, it just widens just a bit. Yes. We want to try and get a lot more movement. I think people, we tend to come compartmentalize our lives a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So people go to do yoga and they say, I'll tick the box. That's I've done right. my yoga for yeah. the day or for yeah. the week. Yeah. But they don't think about how is that, how do I can apply that to my life? Like yoga is kind of teaching you how to move, get some movement into your body. It might be how to engage through your core stability system as well. But then we don't use that at all uh, yeah. on our day to day. So yeah. it's just kind of like, yeah, tick the box, move on. I'll go back, I oh, haven't done that bit for a few days. I'll go tick that box again. But if you think about that hour session you're doing, mm. um, it, it's, it's, it's just a drop in the water compared to your, your movement. The overall. Yeah, from, yeah, throughout your day. So it's, it's, I think with, with good posture um, and, and, and knowing how to move well, mm. it's, it's about a level of awareness. Mm. And so once you've had that experience that, oh, I've been doing the wrong thing. And yeah. You know, this is going to be going in this direction and I can expect maybe more of this mm. and hopefully that's enough of a motivation to start to click your awareness yeah and um, definitely in clinic the patients that pick up on that mm. and actually start working with a few exercises and start to wear mm. that awareness start to feel changes uh, almost straight away yeah so it, it can be quite profound but it takes quite a bit of effort mentally mm. in the short term to build that awareness up to Definitely, start with yeah. but once you get used to it like any habit mm. um, you can 
yeah, just have your little cues and you can keep things going. Always takes more effort to get something started yes. than to keep it going. Oh, definitely. And so. it's a lovely parallel to what I do as well with my clients, um, teaching them to build awareness to their nonverbal communication. Mm. So what they're actually mm. communicating through their body. Um, what, you know, what I was thinking was, um, so what I've started trying to do is, you know, being aware of that when I'm in longer meetings is actually standing up. Mm. And there's a real, what I've noticed, I've, and I've got that as a bit of a sort of social, uh, personal kind of mission to do that and also to sort of make a stand on it. But what I've noticed is the barrier, the social barrier to actually standing up in mm. the middle of mm -hmm. a meeting mm. uh, or when you're in a sort of training course. Yeah. Um, what do you sort of, you know, from your perspective, is it something that you try and... Oh, um, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah because uh, some people in their jobs are constantly in meetings. Yes. And so it's, it's seated again, and often the, the seats that they're sitting in aren't the ergonomic set-up seats uh, yeah. for them. Um, it's like hot desk, desking as well. It's like yes. uh, the, you can never get the, 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 the setup that's right for you. And mm. so, um, and I've heard of some people where where they don't even have formal desks, they just have like a lounge type situation and you, you're sitting on couches kind of doing things as yeah. well. And it's all to try and inspire, but you know, like free throw thinking and all that. But but actually, you know, like it's, it's yeah, all these, you got to look for variation. Mm. You got to try and create variation but, but you know, people need their desk to do pro productivity well you know, and they need their own sort of setup to make sure that, that they stay healthy in the, for yeah. their productivity. Um, the other problem with seated posture is you tend to, like I mentioned earlier, mm. you're shortening through here and you're shortening through here. So you're mm. kind of squashing your lungs, you can't get a full breath of air. You're also compressing your digestive system so you get suppressed digestion. And so these all have knock-on effects to how much energy you have, mm. essentially, as well. So. Yeah. So what would you say was the recommended um, you know, amount of time that you need to, like how long can you stay in a static position before you should be moving? Oh yeah, it's a good question. And, I'm, and it might vary for, for different people, but you yeah. probably want to, and it, and it might also depend on your work. So it can be different trying to, like you want to try to work it into your basis. But yeah. if, you can, if you can do something every sort of 40, 60 minutes, it's like just get up and, 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 and do something if it's a 10 minute routine mm. and some specific exercises that get into the areas that you need to get into mm. can kind of buy you a bit more time rather than just doing any old kind of movement. Any movement is better than some, but there are some things that you can focus on to try and maximise the movement that you're doing, so then you're maximising the time when you're working as well. Mm. So mm. it's variable. <laughs> yeah, yep. absolutely. Yep. So so the first thing I try to get people to wear, uh, aware of with their posture, try to build their awareness of where, where their centre of gravity is and how they're loading related, relatively to the centre of the earth. Okay. So we've got a balance point where our centre of gravity should line up. Mm -hmm. And at that point is actually here, just, just in front of the ankle. So it's kind of the mid part of the foot. Okay. So I tell people just to listen to your feet just for a moment. Mm -hmm. Feel where the pressure is on the ground and tell me where you feel the pressure. Now, often I can see where the pressure is just by looking side on, but I try to get the patient to give me feedback. So often the feedback is that, um, well, if you give me the okay. feedback, yeah. Where's the pressure on my feet? <laughs> yeah. Sort of here, yep. I'd say. Yeah, yep. the center. So yep. probably given the cue before anyway, but often the, the feedback is with someone with bad posture is that they can feel that most of the weight is on the ball of the foot or towards the toes. So what that means is that their center of gravity is Mm. Like they're moving forward of their center of gravity. Yes. Now this changes, again, how muscles activate. Mm. So you tend to become a bit more quad dominant okay. and, and calf dominant when you're moving. It puts more pressure on the kneecaps. That's if you're forward like if this. You're, if you're tending to lean yeah. like forward, so if you've got this rounded shoulder forward mm. head posture, bit sway back, maybe the pelvis is coming forward, mm. you tend to have that weight forward. And people don't realize it until they mm. stop to think. Yeah. So the first move to get people to do is actually try and bring their center of gravity back so there's more weight on the heels mm. which automatically makes them feel like they're going to fall backwards because yeah. they're so not used to it mm. so but i get them to do it in a specific way so often it's just standing as yes yeah, as natural as you can yeah, yeah. while you're under examination yeah. <laughs> is, um, so i'm just going to give you a couple of prompts okay so as i'm going to prompt here and here i want you to expand upwards okay great so it's very subtle change 
So now we're looking for the middle ear, the shoulder, the hip joint, knee, all to line up with the spot. So when you do that, you should feel that that weight is shared a bit more on the heel. Yep, okay. it is, definitely, yep. yeah. That's awesome because it's like quite quite subtle, but yeah, it makes a big exactly. difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, and you know, that that whole feeling of that that that, that feeling of feeling uh, falling backwards is partly because obviously the brain has mm. been used to a different type of loading yep. and then it's not switched on the muscles to support you in that position so you don't mm. feel like you've got the support there. But if you, you know, obviously get used to it and try and drum it in, yep. um, that obviously changes. This, right. To me, I guess I wasn't that much forward, but to me this just instantly feels more stable. Yeah. It feels, yeah. You know, it feels quite good. Although it feels sort of like um, almost having to use more more effort to be in it because yeah, I guess yeah. it's not so habitual. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and so the other thing is that we want to try and do is make sure so what our first change there is basically to do mm. with pelvic position. Okay. And so if if most of the pain and discomfort from posture poor posture is in the upper body, mm. we can't actually look past this because if this is wrong, we're never going to get this right. Okay. So a lot of people when they think, oh I'm going to have my shoulders back, they kind of arch your back. Yeah. And so actually it's more to do with that pelvis too. So what you just did there was just to bring that pelvis back into alignment with the rest of your center of gravity so you're loading a bit better. The next part of it is actually kind of the position of the shoulder girdle. Again, coming back to that protracted position, mm. shoulders are forward. Uh, unstable position of the shoulder girdle we want to try and make sure that we know how to put it in a uh, in that neutral position yeah and, and so you get this rolling what you just did then is quite yep. good lifting the shoulders up and sort of rolling them and dropping them down yep. is a good way yeah um, another way to think about it is if you turn your palms so you're all the way forward if you keep twisting them all the way around you can feel how your shoulder blade comes in and sits against your rib cage, mm -hmm. okay? Without any sort of stress in through these muscles or through the lower thoracic muscles of yep. the spine. And then if you just relax at the forearm, then, then, and just let your arms go, all of a sudden the hands start to change the orientation. Mm, it's so quite different, yep. Yep, and so in poor posture, we're coming back to the, I'm jumping around a little bit here, but in poor posture, we've got this rounding of the shoulder. Mm. So we can see that in the hands. So yes. if someone walks in the door, the palms are facing backwards. Yes. Almost like dragging the knuckles. Yes. And so, so when we've got good posture, and we've got the shoulder girdle sitting where it should be, mm. straddling the rib cage like a saddle on a horse, mm. then, then the muscles around the back are more relaxed. They're not having to do so much stability work. Mm. And you find that the palms of the hands are now facing inwards. So you're walking more with your, your thumbs pointing forward. So if you've got that lengthening up, you're a little bit yes. more in alignment, a bit lighter on your feet, and you've got that, you, you, mm. your palms hanging in. Then the last thing to change is just checking your head position because that rolling forward of the shoulders is, always comes with this dropping forward of the chin. So then it's just pointing out that we just need to bring that chin back a little bit too okay. and help, really helping that line up. Because we well. think often about the chin up or chin down but we don't actually think about forward back do we? Yeah exactly yep. yeah and so some of the exercises and bringing that awareness people automatically go into extension when yes. they bring it back so you have to say no 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 keep the chin down and push it back into that, that position here. Yeah. Yes. And so once, we're, once we've done those changes mm. uh, we're, you know the spine's lining up much better there's, mm. there's not so much rounding of uh, weight, I suppose, on, 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 on the shoulders and neck and that. Mm.